will be the last video I make on chapter 5, the center of gravity, center of mass, etc. And so this is kind of just a little concluding word. I'm not going to do any calculations, but I want to just still try to provide an intuition of why we need to calculate what, what the center of gravity, why it's, it's so helpful and so important. And I've just found some diagrams, found some pictures to just still try to give you some intuition. Remember that the center of gravity and the center of mass, you calculate it from a number of components. Right? If you've just got a single point mass, then of course the center of mass and gravity is at that point. But, but remember that, for example, a light fixture like this. Why do we want to determine the center of mass or the center of gravity? Because we want to know what, how we need to mount it to the floor. So we've got this distributed um, structure right there's a there's a specific diameter beam there di different diameter and it changes and it's distributed multiple components and and we can maybe determine that that is where our sense of mass is so that is it is as if all the mass is concentrated at that point and we've got weight down there right okay that's meant to be a w Okay, weight is acting down there, and so we we can use then some of the moments and some of the forces equal to zero. We use these equations to then determine what support reaction do I need here? In this case, right, so if you draw your free body diagram, it'll be something like that. And then what do I need over here? Well I need I need a a moment reaction right and uh, I need to stop it from moving in the X and the Y directions so the point is we know okay well now I can calculate moments about this point because I've, I've got this the magnitude and the direction and the position of this the weight the center of the weight which acts through the center of gravity okay so it helps us determine uh, what kind of support reactions we need. Another example. Um, well, I'm not going to necessarily give you a reason for the vehicle now. I'll give you in the next example. But um, using the, the techniques we just learned, how would we determine the center of mass of this, uh, this three-wheeler? It looks like a three-wheeler. I don't know. I just cut and paste this picture. Can you see it's made up of a lots of different components two two or three wheels it's made up of this uh, body whether it's aluminium or carbon fiber it's made up of of all these various components the engine the exhaust the the springs all these things and so you would again you would do exactly what we did before you would say okay let us choose say that as our origin and we make that our x-axis and we make that our y-axis okay and our assumption is that it's symmetrical about the x and, and y plane okay so then you would say okay well x bar times the total mass of all the components of this motorbike is equal to the sum of x m which is now i take this component and I get its moment arm about this point, about the y-axis. And I get the mass of that component. And I do that for that one. And I do it for this one. And so we calculate the centroids. We can break this guy up, right, into a shape like that and like that. And we can make approximations. We can say, okay, well, let's take the, the, the engine. Let's assume it's made all of steel. Let's weigh it. Let's... Let's weigh this guy and we, we come up with, say, 500 kilograms. We weigh it and we assume, guys, this is engineering. You, you make like an assumption. Let's assume it's a box. Let's assume that the whole engine is a box. And so we can determine its center of, of mass by assuming a uniform density, right? And then, then you work with this wheel and then you work with, with that um, the, the the shocks the springs and you can do this 
for all those components about about the x and the y axis and then you can estimate okay then you can estimate a center of mass okay so that is practically how you could do it so i've already told you like uh, how why it is important for these these static objects it's also important for dynamic dynamic objects okay for example a vehicle why do we want to determine the center of mass well one practical reason is i'm sure you've heard of buses being top heavy right things like that so if your center of mass say for this truck is say it's over there let's change the color uh what do you want uh, let's make it green right say it's over there okay you can't see that at all okay there's your center of mass now as it's going around the bend you would agree with me that we have we've got these uh i just keep needing to go back to red all the time you can see that we've got friction acting here that's the only thing that's keeping this truck from sliding out and whatever is friction okay so if if we if the center of mass is up here and we take moments moments about the center of mass okay what have you got you've got the force this is friction and you've got a moment on d right so the larger can you see that the larger d is the greater your moment is and look at the moment it is like that it wants to rotate the truck so that it tips over it goes tips over like that so the lower the center of mass the smaller your your moment arm is the smaller the moment so i just wanted to give you some kind of intuition of the importance of why we want to calculate the center of gravity center of mass etc okay it is so important for static statics problems and dynamics problems okay good luck